so I grew up in the church, uh, born and raised, as they say. I was really actively involved in First United Methodist Church in Pineville. It's kind of what I consider to be my home church. It's where I got my start and uh, continue to be actively involved um, even in, into college in church life and all of that stuff. And really early on in my college career, um, I, I felt this call to full-time vocational ministry. I remember I went to church one Sunday morning, just a normal Sunday morning, and while worshiping through song, I just felt God speak to me and say, I want you to be a pastor. And I very quickly replied, no, thank you. <laughs> I had very little interest in being a pastor. Actually, I, I had no interest in being a pastor whatsoever. <laughs> and so I was like, not interested. Um, so I ran. I ran fast and I ran far. But God had more endurance. And over the period of a year, I'm wrestling with this calling. Um, and finally, after a year of this, I, I began to sort of think, gosh, this isn't going away. Maybe there really is something to this. Maybe this really is the direction that God would have me go. And so I just began to pray. And I began to pray, God, if, if you really want me to be a pastor, if you really want me in full-time vocational ministry, then I really want you, I really want someone to, to tell me. Uh, I don't care who they are. I just want to know that they love you. And I want to know, well, I don't want them to know me so well that they know what I'm going through and they know what I'm wrestling with. But I also don't want them to be a complete stranger. And so I prayed that prayer and I continue to pray that prayer. And two weeks later, a group came to visit uh, from what is a group from YWAM stands for youth with a mission out from, uh, I believe it was Tyler, Texas. So they came into town to do some mission work around the area. And I got to meet all of them that Sunday morning and that Sunday evening, they put on a service for our church community. And so I was able to get off work. I went, um, I'm at the service and we're worshiping through song once again. And then I see um, this young woman who I had met exit her pew kind of in the, my peripheral vision. And it's, it seemed like she was coming my general direction and um, she got a little closer. And then I was like, she walking towards me. And then she was, she, she ended up coming right up to me and she said, Hey, I feel like I need to tell you something. Um, I know that right now you are wrestling with what God has called you to do, but he just wants you to trust him. He wants you to trust him a hundred percent and just never look back. And I was like, what? Like, no way. I cannot believe this. Um, so that was an obvious answer to that prayer that I had prayed and, and was praying. So from that moment, I knew, yeah, this is it. I mean, this is, this has to be the direction that God is wanting to take my life. And so, um, after finishing college, I attended Asbury Seminary in Wilmore, Kentucky, had a phenomenal experience there. And um, through, the, through my studies at seminary, I grew to learn of the Methodist movement and really just fall in love with the Methodist movement. It, it truly is an incredible just movement of, of God that you see in the world. And I really love the emphasis um, Methodism has of both the personal and the social aspects of the gospel. And by God's grace, I hope to be a model of missional living to those in my sphere of influence and also mobilize others um, to do the exact same as an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church. There's a few funny stories I could share today, um, but one in particular stands out amongst all others, I would say. <laughs> this, um, gosh, do I even really want to share this? I will. I guess I will. Um, this happened kind of in the recent past, um, probably before COVID, just, just before COVID, probably seven, maybe eight months ago. I woke up one Sunday morning, and I was feeling off. Um, I 
can't really explain exactly how I was feeling, but, but just off. I wasn't feeling right. But I woke up and I was beginning to, you know, practice a sermon message like I always do almost every Sunday morning. And um, throughout that time, I, I continued to just kind of feel worse and worse and worse. And it got to the point where I was like beginning to think I was sick. Um, and my wife, Brittany, had actually experienced something similar just probably, I don't know, a, a week or two prior. And I was like, oh, maybe I kind of have what, what she had going on. But um, I thought to myself, I'm just going to push through. I can do this. You know, I, I spent so much time and effort and energy preparing this message. And I don't want that to go to waste. So I'm going to push through. I'm going to get it done. And then I'll come home and take a nap or something. It'll be, it'll be fine. Well, I get to the church and it, I'm continuing to feel worse and worse and worse. Um, and even one of the uh, parishioners came in the, in the back of our uh, small space and uh, he took one look at me and he's like, you don't look good. <laughs> I was like, well, thanks. Um, but I was just leaning over a chair, you know, just kind of like slumped. But I keep, kept saying to myself, I'm going to push through. And Brittany was trying her best to convince me otherwise. She was like, look, you just need to go home. People will understand. It's going to be okay. But I'm very hard-headed, and I was like, no, I'm here. This is happening. And so I start the service, and um, it's going pretty well. But then it got to the message. And I figured what I would do is, you know, just bring a stool out or something in case I needed to sit um, and it, it would just be fine. And, and I did. I, I started to preach and um, I was standing and I would sit some and then uh, stand a, a bit more and then sit some. And then all of a sudden, things escalated very quickly. And I knew that I was about to throw up. And so I just paused like mid sentence, mid sermon. And I said, I'm sorry, I gotta go. And I just took off like a flash um, to the back room and yikes, before I could even make it, I just started projectile <laughs> vomiting. I mean, the door, the floor, some of it managed to get into the actual toilet. <laughs> and you know, I, I can only, I can envision people's faces because again, this is a small area and I will not go into vivid details, but let's just say it was loud. Okay. It was embarrassingly, horrifyingly loud. And so I finally finished barfing <laughs> and, um, I'm just, I don't know, I don't know what's happening in the sanctuary space at this point, but I kind of hear music. And so I figured, oh, well, they just went ahead and, you know, finished up the service. Well, uh, come to find out later, um, Brittany, my wife, uh, once I was back there, actually took it upon herself to stand up, get behind that pulpit, and then finish preaching the sermon message. <laughs> and so she became the um, part-time pastor that Sunday morning. She's a champ. Uh, so that is my horrifyingly embarrassing story. One I will never forget, um, even though I might hope to and wish I would sometimes. <laughs> but uh, gosh, hope nothing ever happens to any of you like that. And I hope you at least found it humorous. <laughs> I am truly grateful for so, so many people as I reach this milestone in my life. Um, I'm, of course, thankful for my family who first fostered a love of God within me. I'm grateful for my wife who has walked this road with me. Um, it has not always been easy. It's been very challenging at times, and she has shown me such support along the way. You know, honestly, I, there's just too many people to, to name by name. If, if I were to list all the family and friends, and colleagues and mentors who helped me get to where I'm at right now, and it would be like one of those acceptance speeches at the Grammy Awards where like, you would have to cut me off with music, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> um, in order to keep it as brief as possible, uh, I would just say to all of you who have impacted my life, thank you. 
from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Um, thank you for the ways in which you have shaped me and guided me and encouraged me along this journey. Because in, in all honesty, honesty, I could not have done it without you. And so I am forever, forever grateful for each of you. Well, this pandemic has been really challenging for the church. And it's honestly brought about a lot of frustration and a lot of exhaustion. Um, but at the same time, it also presents us an opportunity to really re-envision what it means to be the church and how we do this thing called church. And in that way, it's, it's actually quite exciting. Um, it's, it's invigorating to think that we right now are a part of a seismic spiritual shift that's happening within, within the church. And we get to be a part of, of making sure um, it all comes to fruition. So that's awesome in that way. Uh, one of the words that I've been focusing on lately is flexibility. Um, I think numerous factors are, have forced us as the church to be more flexible. And though it hurts, just like stretching hurts, um, <laughs> I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing because I think that as we learn to become more flexible, uh, eventually that is going to lead to greater faithfulness and greater fruitfulness in ministry. Well, life and ministry has been really challenging lately. Uh, it's been hard in so many ways. Um, but I'm still in this because I think Jesus is awesome. <laughs> I think the gospel is really, really good news. And I want to be a part of changing the world. And I think uh, proclaiming Jesus, um, declaring who he is and demonstrating who he is through actions is, is the best way to do just that.